Mr. Mayor, three years ago, I had the privilege of standing before the generous people of Ōtara Papa Toi Toi as their newly elected chair. It was there that I spoke of the, um, the abiding entrepreneurial spirit of my parents, <coughs> who more than 40 years ago left the safety and comfort of their villages of Malie and Satufia, Satupaitea and Samoa to make Auckland their new home. New opportunities, new dreams, new jobs, a new life. It was for those reasons that they made the exciting and somewhat daunting journey here to New Zealand. Working on factory floors at New Zealand Products in Penrose, cleaning the operating theatres of Middlemore Hospital and driving cab 059 for South Auckland <laughs> taxis. They worked multiple jobs and long hours to put food on the table, clothe us and send remittances back home to Samoa. All the while ensuring that my five siblings and I took the chance available to participate in a world-class public education system and adequately housed in a four-bedroom state house on Preston Road in Ōtara. The first in my family to attend and graduate from university, I am keenly aware of the price my family have paid for me. That achievement was the result of familial sacrifice and a system that looked to assist those less fortunate in life to have a fighting chance to succeed. I was at school in the 80s when my parents were told not to speak Samoan at home because it would be detrimental to our learning. International evidence now suggests that we know better now. I was also told by one of my seventh form teachers that I was too dumb to go to university. My undergraduate grades, which thankfully can't be legoimed, suggest <laughs> even I know. <laughs> Fortunately, there were more people in my life who believed in that. Mr. Mayor, that's why thousands make Auckland their home. Because like my parents, it stands for new horizons and a new start. Whether seeking refuge from war-stricken regions, a business opportunity, a change in career, or just wanting somewhere great to raise a family, Auckland is the place of new beginnings. At this point in time, we can capitalise on the influx of human resource for our people and our city, because by focusing on people's potential, we can seriously transform our society for better. Auckland is the place where ideas, voices, cultures and ways of living can be quite beautifully interwoven. And we need not fear the resulting collision that comes from being a super diverse city, because it's that diversity and difference which gives Auckland its unique character. We have much to learn from each other, and in order to do so, we must draw from a personal and spiritual well of humility, compassion, respect, and care. On these fundamental tenets of our genuine commitment to humanity will we build an enduring society, reducing the divide between young and old, Decile 1 and Decile 10 schools, white collar and blue collar, left and right. Building a great city is firstly about building strong and resilient people. Today, alongside my dear friend and colleague, Councillor Al Filipena, whom I'd like to acknowledge, we're blessed to be the elected members of Manuka. Where 40% of our population is under the age of 25, like myself, we <laughs> <laughs> four out of five people identify as either Māori, Asian or Pacific. It's the ward with one of the lowest rates of home ownership in the country and an increasing level of homelessness. Auckland's Accidental Property Millionaires Club is yet to reach the people of Manuku. <clears throat> Today hundreds of children in my ward went to school hungry. Hundreds of our kids slept in cold garages and cars last night and hundreds of those very families take the little they have, forced to decide between paying for food or power or rent from week to week. Those stark choices are disempowering and demeaning. I know this reality because it's a reality that we lived in Ōtara for many years. I have a four-year-old daughter who's here today and couldn't bear to see her go hungry or cold in winter nights, and I'm sure that every parent in this room would feel the same way. And so it is for these constituents the people that I sit beside in church every Sunday, shop with at Hunter's Corner, barter with at the Mangare Markets, and wait for the train together with at Otahu train station, mm -hmm. it is for them that I stand today. They, they, they demand and deserve strong leadership for change, equity, and compassion. Every life, every experience, and every story matters. And not just for the few who know how to lobby those in public office 
or have now become experts at public forum and deputation. We have a duty to listen to all Aucklanders in all the languages of this city and at all its gathering places. Tamaki Makoto, Auckland, the place where goals are set, where aspirations come to fruition, the place where people must remain our focus. Yes, people, regardless of their postcode, religion, age, country of origin, or income bracket, the Auckland my parents came to was the one that was committed to building lives, strengthening communities, and giving people a decent place to work, live, school, and play. A place that my parents are now happy to call home. It is therefore my privilege to stand here today, ready, willing, and equipped to serve and speak for the people of Manuko, the face of the future. In closing your worship, I'd like to make a few personal acknowledgements. Firstly, a special shout out to my mentor and friend, Reverend Wesifili Unasa and his whaletua, Susan Unasa. To my brothers and sisters, all of whom are now based in Australia, my mother, Lotomo Collins, and my father, Tawili Ilisi or Collins, who passed away eight years ago. And I'm sure my dad is watching happily from heaven. To my parents in law, to Ofaya Lingaoi Opitsa Elika and Asalemu Elika. My mother in law, known better to Kapirila, is Nana, who only five months passed away. Today we remember her with deeply fond and special memories. Finally, to the two most amazing women in my life, my wife, Fia, and our beautiful daughter, Gabriella, who are here with me today. <coughs> they are the inspiration for everything I do. I love you, family. May we always choose to put God first, foremost, and always. Your Worship, thank you for the chance to offer my inaugural thoughts. I look forward to a constructive, inclusive, an engaging term, and again thank the wonderful people of Manuko for this great honour. So for my